The lymphatic system is a system that occurs all over the body except for the central nervous system. We can think of it as two main parts. You have the vessels that are collecting and transporting the fluid, and you have structures. We'll look at the vessels first. These are all over your body except for the CNS, and they pick up fluid that's left behind by your blood capillaries. So we start with capillaries. Capillaries are the smallest. They intertwine with your blood capillaries. And they pick up fluid. That fluid then travels through the capillaries into vessels. So vessels are the result of merging capillaries. Vessels are very similar to veins. Their walls are similar and they have valves like veins do. These valves are very important because they keep the fluid moving in the right direction. You also have lymph nodes scattered along the vessels. The vessels then merge into larger structures called trunks. And trunks merge into ducts. So it goes capillaries, vessels, trunks, ducts. Here's a little trick I have for remembering that. I always picture a duck sitting in a tree. And I think of capillaries as out here is like the roots of the tree. And the capillaries merge into vessels. Then the vessels merge to form the trunks. So think of going up the trunk of the tree. And then the trunks merge to form the ducts. So even though it's duct with a T, it sounds like duck. So I always just think of the duck in a tree to remember which order those go in. Now we can look at the structures. Okay, you have the tonsils. You have the thymus gland, the lymph nodes, which are along the vessels, the spleen, on the intestines and wherever you have mucous membranes, you have MALT, which stands for Mucosa Associated Lymphatic Tissue. So this is found at entrances to the body, the digestive tract, the urinary tract, the respiratory tract, and then you also have red bone marrow. So in the vessel part is where you have fluid picked up that's left behind by capillaries. It flows through capillaries, vessels, trunks, ducts, to the subclavian veins up here, where it is returned to the blood, then you also have the lymphatic structures. 
the tonsils, thymus, lymph nodes, spleen, malt, and red bone marrow. That's the parts of the lymphatic system. Now let's look at the function. The lymphatic system is unique in that its function is to help other systems. And it has three other systems that it helps. The cardiovascular, the digestive, and the immune. So first we'll look at how it helps the cardiovascular system. So as blood flows through your capillaries, fluid is left behind. If you think back to chapter 20 when we learned about capillary exchange, and remember the filtration and reabsorption, how you have 14 comes out in filtration and 5 goes back in reabsorption and 9 is left behind, that's where the lymphatic capillaries come in. So you have blood flowing like this from the artery into the capillary and then back through the veins, back to the heart. As blood flows through the capillary, you have fluid left behind. That is because filtration is greater than absorption. So the lymphatic capillaries are here to pick up this fluid. It then flows into the vessels. So you can see here are the vessels. It flows through the lymph nodes. Then those merge to get your trunk, which then merge to your duct and the fluid is returned into the subclavian vein. And now the fluid is back in your blood. This picture shows the areas of the body drained by the two different ducts. This area is drained by the thoracic duct. and this area is drained by the right lymphatic duct. Now we can look at how the lymphatic system helps the digestive system. Your small intestine is responsible for absorbing your nutrients. It has structures called villi that have both blood and lymphatic capillaries. So here you can see is a villus that's greatly enlarged, so they're tiny microscopic structures. Here we're looking up close inside one of them. And you can see that it has a blood capillary and then also a lymphatic capillary called a lacteal. So a lacteal is a special type of lymphatic capillary. It is a lymphatic capillary that is found in the villi of the small intestine. And here they have a different function. Instead of just absorbing fluid left behind by blood capillaries, 
they're helping to absorb nutrients. So if you think about food, food has its three main nutrients. Protein, carbohydrates, and lipids, the fats and oils. When you eat these foods, you digest them. And from protein, you get amino acids. From carbs, you get glucose. And from lipids, you get triglycerides. These two, the amino acids and the glucose and other small carbs, enter the blood capillary in the villus. But your lipids enter the lacteal. This lymph that has lipids in it is called chyle. And it has a milky appearance because of the color of the lipids. This picture shows where that chyle flows. So from the intestines, it all goes here to a structure called the cisterna chyli. So this is where the chyle from the lacteals collects. Okay, now we can go on and see how the lymphatic system works with the immune system. So we said the lymphatic system is unique in that its only function is to help other systems. The immune system is unique in that it has no organs. The immune system is just made of cells. So the lymphatic system basically supplies organs for the immune system to use. And we can divide these into two different types. We have primary and secondary. A primary lymphatic structure is one that is involved in the production of immune cells. And there are two of these, the red bone marrow and the thymus gland. Red bone marrow makes all of the cells. Makes all of your blood cells and all of your immune cells. Then there's one type of immune cell called a B lymphocyte that matures in the bone marrow. The thymus gland is where T lymphocytes mature. This pictures, these two pictures, are showing the thymus gland of a child versus the thymus gland of an adult. If you think about it, kids are developing their immune systems. So children need a larger thymus gland. The thymus gland grows until puberty.
After puberty, it shrinks. So an adult will have a much smaller thymus gland than a child. Okay. Now we can look at the secondary structures. These are what house mature immune cells. So immune cells are found all over your body, protecting every bit of your body. But they need kind of home bases, places to work out of. And that's what secondary lymphatic structures do. Okay, so we have here the lymph node. You have about 500 to 700 lymph nodes, and they are scattered all over the body, but you do have clusters. Most of them occur in the neck, the armpit, or the groin. Okay, so think about when you have a medical exam. Doctors often feel your neck and your armpits. If you have an infection, lymph nodes tend to swell. So they're feeling where you have lots of lymph nodes to see if they're swollen to see if you have infection. You have the spleen. The spleen filters your blood. It stores platelets. So if you get a bad cut and you're losing a lot of blood, you have extra platelets there in the spleen that you can use, and it also destroys old red blood cells. You have tonsils. So there are three sets of tonsils, and they are kind of clean or check for pathogens. in whatever you inhale and ingest. And then you have malt, which is the mucosa-associated lymphatic tissue. So this is at the entrances to the body. Wherever there's an entrance to the body, that's an opportunity for germs to get in. So this would be like your digestive system, the urinary, the genital, and the respiratory. So here's where you house immune cells to guard those entrances. And a particular type of malt is called Peyer's patches. These are found in the small intestine. And it's malt that has so many immune cells, and it's so big that it actually forms these little bumps on the small intestine that you can see. So there's an overview of the immune system and the three other systems that it works with. Let's look some more at the lymphatic system. Let's focus now on that network of vessels. Remember that you're collecting lymphatic fluid from all over the body and you're transporting it to the subclavian veins.
Okay, we've already learned about the heart and how blood flows. Blood has the heart pumping it. So your heart is always beating, pumping the blood, forcing it to move. Lymph does not have that benefit. There's no pump attached to the lymphatic system. So you have to move all this fluid to your shoulders. And you do not have the benefit of the heart. To make this even more challenging, most of it is going against gravity. The only thing above your shoulders is your head. Everything else has to be moved against gravity to get to your shoulders. So you do have four methods to move this fluid. Two of these you already know because they're the same methods that veins use. So you should recognize this picture from chapter 20. One is the skeletal muscle pump. Now, this is a picture I borrowed from chapter 20 to show these. So just where it has a vein, imagine a lymphatic vessel instead. So just like with your veins, when you are active, and your muscles squeeze your veins, they also squeeze your lymphatic vessels. And remember, lymphatic vessels have a structure very similar to veins, including valves. So those same valves that make the blood flow in the right direction in your veins are also working in the lymphatic vessels. The second one is the respiratory pump. So this is our inhale pitcher. This is our exhale pitcher. Whenever you inhale, the diaphragm goes down and pushes on the abdomen. And just like it squeezed the blood in the veins, it also squeezes the lymph in the lymphatic vessels. At the same time, having that larger chest when you inhale creates suction and helps pull the lymph up. Okay, now we have two more methods that were not found in the veins. So the next two methods are lymph only. So method number three is where you take advantage of the pulse of arteries. So remember that arteries stretch in order to receive blood from the heart. So arteries have a pulse. A lymphatic vessel will get right next to the artery. So you would have a lymphatic vessel here. Then every time that the artery pulses, the artery is squeezing the lymphatic vessel. And the fourth one is using smooth muscle in the walls.
With your lymphatic system, this smooth muscle can contract rhythmically and push the lymph along. Kind of like milking the lymph and making it flow, or kind of like how the heart pumps rhythmically and creates flow. One important thing I want to point out here. When you're talking about the lymphatic system, the smooth muscle in the wall contracts to propel the lymph. Do not confuse this with what happens in blood vessels. In blood vessels, you also have smooth muscle in the wall. But in a blood vessel, when that smooth muscle in the wall contracts, it is for the purpose of vasoconstriction. So both have smooth muscle in their walls, but that smooth muscle provides two different functions between blood and lymph. Okay, so now that we've looked at how lymph flows, we can see what happens when you get problems with lymph flow. A lot of people can get swelling in their legs and their ankles, like especially with pregnancy or if you have a job where you stand on your feet all day. So part of this is just the simple fact that you're fighting gravity. And if you have something going on that's creating pressure or that you're not using that skeletal muscle pump, you can just get that buildup of fluid. So if you have a lack of activity, If there's pressure, that's what pregnancy does. It creates pressure from the growing fetus. If you are standing still for long periods, you can just, the pump can't overcome gravity. This is why some people wear compression socks, you can see in the picture there. They help to squeeze so that that fluid can't collect there. The fluid has to go back up. Another thing that happens, and this is especially common in people with breast cancer. A lot of times when you have a mastectomy for breast cancer, those lymph nodes in the armpit are removed. This creates a dead end. So you have lymph that's being collected out here in the arm and it's trying to flow to the shoulder but then it gets here and it hits a dead end because that lymphatic tissue was removed in order to stop the spread of cancer. So this then causes swelling of the arm. So the lymph in the armpit is commonly removed when there's breast cancer. The reason for this is that cancer can spread through the lymphatic system. So you do this to prevent the spread of the cancer or to stop the spread. But by doing this, you've created a dead end for the lymphatic vessels in the arms. And so you get edema in that arm. A third problem you can get 
is elephantitis. This is a parasitic infection. where there are worms that live in the lymphatic vessels. And the vessels become so full of worms that they clog it. And so then you get this edema downstream of where the worms are clogging the vessel. Well, there is the lymphatic system, the shortest and easiest chapter in the book. Congratulations, you're done with this chapter.